We are so excited to have you with us and we are praying that this episode will yet be another avenue for you to be blessed. My name is Toby and on this episode, I will be here with my friends, my hosts, my, 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 oh, <laughs> my beloved co-host, Okwe and Leke. Say Hello. hi to them. Hello everyone, it's another marvelous time. Yeah. Here on the Fresh Podcast. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. say hi. Yeah, you're welcome once again. We're happy to be here and we're happy to have you also. Mm-hmm. So we hope that you enjoy the show this time around. Yes, mm-hmm. definitely you will. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about something that um, in the Nigerian space is not really, really talked about, but I have personally experienced this thing that I want to talk about. And I'm sure some of you that are watching, in fact, many of you that are watching, but I've also experienced what we are talking about today. So on today's episode of the Refresh Podcast, we want to talk about surviving friendship breakups. Not romantic breakups, but friendship breakups. This thing is not so much talked about, and it is one of the hardest things to navigate through in life. But then let me just chill first and allow my guys to talk first. So uh, let's begin with Nikki today. Nikki, just tell us your maybe an experience you've had about friendship breakup and how you were able to you know survive it. What happened? You know how did it happen and all of that. Just share with us. Okay. Um. Some years back, I have I had this best friend of mine. You know, we were so close. Mm. Like you know, we were inseparable. Wow. So. Uh, I don't feel like, I don't know, some, some things just started happening like um, lack of communication, lack of um, change of value, lack of interest, you know, and all of those things. And before I knew it, the separation grew. Yeah. And just so you know, I tried my best to resolve those things. I tried my best. I made contacts, I visited, and all of this. There's a long story, but I'm just, I will just carry yeah. on, you know, I visited, I tried to reconcile with all of them, but, you know, it didn't, it, it didn't work. It didn't work. It was just what it is. So how did how did that experience leave you? Um, it left me with the fact that um, not all friendship are meant to last forever. Mm. And that's the one thing I got from that thing. Not all friendship are meant to, uh, to last forever. And um, secondly, I got to realize that you don't if someone does not want a friendship, you don't force it. Okay. You don't have to force it. If people lose interest in you, you lose interest in people you know, personally for yourself. You don't force it. You don't try to because it makes your it, it, it makes them look at you like you are low self esteem and you need people to you understand. Ah, I'm very clean view. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. so, if I like a person, I can be very clean view. Uh, amongst all of those, those are the things yeah. I could pull out from that relationship or that relationship. And it's really, although um one thing I didn't do is I didn't hit him, I didn't hit the person. Okay. You know, and I wish the person, you know, be good at all times. But that um, good for the communication that seems like the, 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 it seems like the experience didn't leave you broken. Mm-hmm. Not really, not Wait, like, you came like, not totally broken. Okay. Okay, how <laughs> about you? Have you experienced what you think for? I've always had beautiful intentions. Oh, it's always been because of distance or maybe change in value, change in interest. But there's one particular one when I was in school that sort of like hurt me. Mm. Um, the reason we grew apart or we broke off our friendship was it was due to financial matters. Oh, okay. We were very close. We were best friends. I like the fact that it was a twin. I love twins, you know. I <laughs> <laughs> we were best friends. Everybody knew that oh, these guys are you know very much close and. One day he came for assistance, you know, like giving him some money as a student, and he never came back home. Wow. You know, that's, that, that can be very hard for me. Never came back right. home, and he didn't even communicate with me, like, you know, for why he hasn't been back home. We just grew apart. Mm. You know, somebody that I see every day, that I talk with, even though we don't see every day, during breaks, we talk on the phone, it just, just went quiet one day. So, was it was the the separation? Did it come from you majorly or, or from him? Well, because it seems like you were the one that was one. How so was it, was it you that was that was retiring? It was it was from it was me that was okay. like trying to keep my distance. 
Mm. Okay, let me tell you guys my own. So, <laughs> I used to have this friend. Okay, so I've had two sad experiences like this. So I used to, well, let me just say one. I'm sure if he sees this this show, he's going to know I'm talking about him. Because <laughs> it was it was terrible. It was very terrible. We were very close. Very, very close. We used to twin. If I buy I'm telling you, uh, we should actually view. I will, I will buy if I buy this type of clothes, I will buy two. I give to him. His mom really liked him a lot. Like I was always going to their house and all of that. I I invested a lot in that friendship because I, I so much believed in that friendship. However, something happened and I felt betrayed. Along the line, I got to discover that it seems like this person doesn't really like me like I thought. So it felt like I was the one doing more in the relationship. I heard one or two things from different quarters and it left me really broken. And I tried to speak with him, you know. I, I, I told him, I said, guy, this is what I heard. Like this, like this, like this, like this. And he just watered it down like it was something that it wasn't like it wasn't something that was important. Mm -hmm. And I was very hot. Like, yeah, I was very I see, I told that guy, I said, I swear to God. Ah. I, I said, I swear to God. If you apologize to me in this life, I will never, I will never forgive you. And do you, guess what he said? What did he say? He said, if you don't forgive me, I will not say you the devil. That statement fueled my anger the more and left me even more determined to not forgive you. And I think that was enough for you to know that he that this guy the, the friendship. Like See, I left that state and I came to where I currently am. And I thought that maybe the distance will hey God. That was when I knew that sometimes friendship breakups can be worse than romantic breakups. Yeah. If I remember some things that we used to do together, I would be crying. My fellow guy. Don't be so emotional. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very emotional. But my fellow guy, I would be crying. I would be crying because this was really painful. It took me two years. Let me tell you something. To get over you. See, at the point, if I hear this guy's name, I'll, I'll throw. It was that bad. I would vomit. If someone should just talk, 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 and they mention this guy's name, I would vomit. There was a day that he called me or trying to apologize. If you see the way I was listening, my mom had to call. My mom heard my voice from her room and she called me to be calm. Then she was talking to me, do you know you're a child of God? This, this, this. I feel that I said, Mom, you know, I've told you everything that this boy did. See, mom said, You have too much to forgive. Yeah. It's been over a year already. I said, it took me a while, but Guy. If you are not forgiving the person, you are burning yourself to yes, exactly. Trouble, exactly. Trouble, yeah. exactly. Exactly. And I know that a lot of our viewers are probably going through this same thing I've talked about. I know it's even worse for, for women. I know it's worse for girls. I'm, I'm surprised that yours. Uh, you you <laughs> but I know it's worse for women because I have seen this thing on Twitter. People talking about maybe like a group of three friends, for example, and then one of the friends now discover that two of the other friends are, you know, are closer and, and they them. and they are doing things and, and leaving her out you of know, this. You discover that you just feel like we move on. Yeah, okay, but you know it's not easy. It's not easy to move on. I tend to move on easily. I don't know. I don't know why. You tend to move on easily. Yeah, well, that is you, you know. Like if what if what happens to you? <laughs> what happens to you? What happens to me? So, do, do you know that when you because tend to move on easily, it, it, it may be a sign of 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 a trauma. And it's not trauma. I've been in a clique of friends, like three hmm. friends, four friends, and I noticed that oh, this person is more closer than they are to me. Probably because they're in the same department, mm. so I don't fight it. Yeah, I'm just you know, give them reasonably doubt that. And then and then you just move on like that. It's not like I move on like that. You don't talk to them about I, it. I no, I don't talk to I don't talk to them about it. Like, hey, I think that it can be translated in the fact that you don't, you like, don't, don't like, like you don't you don't value them. Like, don't they may perceive that you don't value that, them. That, that, that's the perception. No, they can have that perception. Ah they can have they you they, will not. In fact, they, they, do you know that most of the time when people bought us and we don't say anything about it and then we just react, they don't know what they did. I'm telling you. Maybe because I'm, I wasn't so strict to 
I'm not so you really you like them. I think you were more, you were I more. Think, yeah, I, 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 maybe you, you, you're putting up a lot of boundaries. And that's what I'm saying, maybe from yes, the trauma. Like maybe something that happened to you in your past. No, 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 that's not like that. No, it's important. It's important. <laughs> it Are you sure that something has not happened to you in your past that, that has now made you to be so defensive? Like, like, you. like you're always ready. I feel like you guys are picking on me. Are you sure you're not always ready for us? I'm not picking on me. We are just no, stating no. the fact that <laughs> me, when, when, when you have this kind of feeling of where you are there, it means something is there. Something is there. There is something. Yeah. She going down. Because you know, when, 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 when I'm friends with somebody, like I just give them my all. Like oh. I just put everything into it. Mm-hmm. And it, it can be scary because you know that people, people can be, people can be somehow, people tend to not be very honest with friendship these days. Yeah. People are very selfish. But notwithstanding, me, you, if I like her, I don't really like her. I would just put my everything into it. And and the worst can happen. I won't be defensive and, you know. I'm so prejudiced. I still feel I'm guarded. Yes, I think that is what you... That's what we are talking about. That's what we are talking about. <laughs> that's what we are talking about. See, what I are ready. Anything will happen. It may happen. One thing I tend to do, one thing I tend to do. So I lose myself. Exactly. Hey, no, no, one no. thing I tend to do. Yes, I keep my boundaries. You understand, but I still give my all, exactly. and I have the expectation of this person can fuck up. <laughs> I have the expectation of this person can fumble, can fuck up at any time. So, as much as I'm giving my all, mm-hmm. I'm also prepared for, for the worst that can happen. That can happen. But it's important to expect the worst. You understand? So I'm, all, I'm, 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 I'm can't get that that way too. You get what I'm saying? So, see, eh? like me now, after that thing happens to me, I won't like. For the next set of friendships that I had, I was, I was like, okay, I was, <laughs> I had my boundaries up. Mm-hmm. I won't lie. I had my boundaries up because I didn't want to go through, I didn't want to go through that stuff I went through mm-hmm. again. Yes, yes. It was a very traumatic experience for me, guys. Were you able to forgive him? How did you manage the situation? It took me a very long time. Let me tell you something that won't happen. This just is getting more interesting and our time. Yeah. But anyway. Let me tell you what happened. I, I went back to the States, where the guy was, and I had a conversation with one of my friends there. And, and I said that, okay, I'll, let me try to see if I can forgive him. I called him. Where are you? So I was so blunt and so cold. Where are you? Ah, to be called me. I beg, I beg. I, I'm in your town. How far? Where are you did? Come and meet me in the suitcase. I'm in Kenya. When he came, I made him stand out like for like 20 minutes. I was looking at him from upstairs like this. He was calling me no peak. I can very fair to your peak. <laughs> and I went, and I went, oh yeah, how far so? Let's go. And then we went upstairs. And he was trying to talk to me. And while he was trying to talk to me, I was just you called him now. So why did you even call him? I was I was <laughs> irritated at his presence. I was disgusted. You know that when he offended me, not too long after he offended me, I left. Mm. And after leaving, I didn't see him again. At the point after Will a year, he, ever call you? He, he called me after like six months after I had left. Wow. And then I didn't want to talk. After like one year, we tried to talk. I told him I'd forgive him. I thought I'd forgive him. But you see pain. But it's not that residue. It was not residue. It was the main thing. Because the wound during that process, you feel like it for you, resentment. And I hated that guy. Was Me, we are the side of now. He was irritated and disgusted uh-huh. so by sight. Those, those when I saw the guy, I was disgusted. I was irritated at his presence. Mm. And I, I, he was trying to talk to me. What's up now? How is work and all? Fine. Fine. Cool. See, I beg I won't come <laughs> so cool. I, I won't come out. No, no comments. And I was, I was born again, anointed, tongue talking. Mm. But see, pain is pain. And that's what I want to share with you guys today. You the steps. How, how I was able to deal with the pain. See, I, I had to talk to people. I talked to people like my mom. My mom was really helpful that period. Yeah. And then I had other friends. Because at that point, back, honestly, the guy was like my only friend. He was the only friend that I had. So it was very difficult. But I, I met people, some of the people who, t- who talked to me that period told me that I should talk to, I should make other friends. Make other friends. Yeah. I should try to make, I should be open to making other friends. Yes. Let me allow you guys to talk. You, you guys. <laughs> because no, no, it's part of the, the point. I can't be mind I'm talking about this and I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I was not that I talk about. I'll be crying. Because if, if you have like a 
relationships that are just so invested in the very important one and you lose it. And so very traumatic. <laughs> it can be so dramatic, traumatic. Yeah, so very traumatic. I understand. <laughs> if you like dope, you're asking. <laughs> they have seen no <laughs> See, eh? if 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 you want to move on from the hot, learn to forgive, practice forgiveness. It's very important. When you forgive people, it doesn't mean that um they they have won you. Most times when you f- forgive people, it just means that you are ready to move on and you are ready to to just deal with life. It doesn't actually mean that you have to be relating with the person. I and this person are no longer in relationship terms. Like, we don't talk as much as... But I haven't heard from him in maybe like a year now. I haven't heard from him like a year. But I don't hate him anymore. If I see him now, maybe I'll just say hi. But because I need to protect myself, exactly. I don't want to be in that space anymore with that guy because I don't think he has realized how his actions hurt me. So, and if somebody hasn't realized how their actions hurt you, they will do it again. So, even though I have forgiven him, I, I don't want to be in that close relationship space with him anymore. Uh, that, that's when you give them the space. Yes. Some broken, the space. some broken relationships are meant to stay that way. Yes, you definitely. Like God definitely. Yes, yes. yes. Definitely. Then you distance yourself from them. Just yes, so you need to do with that To protect your emotional yes. and your mental um, health. Yeah. You, know, you maintain so you emotional that that stability, you maintain mental stability. I mean, you stay away from them, you get rid of things that remind you of these people. Yes, yes. yes. Not, after you've forgiven them, yes, exactly. you, you can also seek professional advice. That's I remember that. Seek therapy. Yes, if, if, you, if you need it, please do seek um, professional, professional help. When it got to the point where I was vomiting, I remember I had to go and talk to a pastor. You were vomiting? You didn't hear me when I said it. Like, we're puke. <laughs> I used to vomit. Yes, mentioned vomiting. Wow. I used to vomit. If I hear the guy's name or I have a conversation about him, I would show up. Mm-hmm. I had to go and seek professional help when it got to that point. The hatred had had had, had, had that become that, that an obsession. It's, it was it was too much. When we get to that point, I think that's when prayer is prayer is needed. Exactly. You need to pray yeah. about it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I know the will of God can suddenly break up every relationship. Probably it can be restored or not. Yes. Yes. And also try to see if you guys can talk about it. If you guys can talk, yeah. fine. And if you try to talk to them about it, and because I've had friendships where we we're not talking for a while, and then we sought um, an avenue to speak, and after speaking, things came back to to how how they were. So you can also try to still talk, but if you try to if you try reaching out to this person and then they don't budge, just let it go because sometimes the finger of God can be. In that in that um, breakup, yeah. it could be God's desire. God has seen the future, and He understands that He doesn't want this person in your life. So He causes the breakup, and then we should just learn to, like I said, learn to understand God's mindset about our relationships with yes. people. And then just share a scripture with us from the book of Psalms 147 and verse three. The Bible says, "He heals the brokenhearted, mm-hmm. and He binds up their wounds." Also, Philippians 4, 6 says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Learn to talk to God about it and also tell him because the Bible says he binds our wounds and heals the broken hearted. So if your heart is broken because of a separation from your friend that you love so much, please take it to the Lord in prayer. I missed the other, um, the other key points that we shared with you today. Take it to the Lord in prayer. And I am certain that the Lord will help you. Any last word, guys? Yeah, I make the Lord your best friend if you want to avoid all these breakups. <laughs> yes, yes, no. yeah, sure. Yes, sure. Sir. Sure. Okay. Yes, sir. Also, know that not all friendship are meant to last forever. Definitely. Yeah. And not all. We love good. you guys so much. Thank you so, so much for being with us again today. See, we come your way again, same time next month. Please like this program, share this program, and drop a comment. Thank you guys so much. Bye-bye.